Hello, my name is Kristen and I am here with Samantha. <laughs> Samantha. Hi. Samantha, full disclosure, is a former student of mine from quite a few years ago. And I do have a quick thing I need to tell everybody before we begin the manifestation conversation. The, um, the uh, first night that I was given the idea by a friend of mine to have these conversations about manifestation with people, I put up a note on both Instagram and Facebook where I said, hey, is anyone interested in having, you know, possibly videotaped conversations on Zoom about manifestation? Samantha was the first person to direct message me and respond. So thank you. And <laughs> Samantha, we had like a two and a half hour video conversation that night. Yes. And it was not recorded. It, it didn't matter. I said, look, let's just chat. Let's just talk. We'll just, we'll just talk. In that conversation, everybody, in that two and a half hour conversation, Samantha helped me arrive at the format that has so far been really successful, the format of, of these manifestation conversations. So I have huge, huge gratitude to you, Samantha. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you not only for, for being the first person to respond and say, I will gladly talk to you about this. What's it about? But for helping me through your questions, helping me find the format. So thank you. And You're welcome. with that, we're going to get to my two questions upon which all of, the, all of this is predicated, predicated. The first question is, can you tell us something or some things that you manifested in your life and how they went? how it happened, how, how they went. And then we're gonna get into what you would like to manifest for your present life and for your future. And then uh, I'm gonna see if um, I can help you with some guidance on that. So I'm gonna give you the floor, Samantha, go for it. Okay, so this is so exciting. Great. And um, I was super excited about your idea about these, um, these videos on manifestation just because I, that's been a really, big thing in my life lately and I've been sharing it with everybody and I'm like this is how I got here and um so I just kind of wanted to start with a little bit of just the beginning and okay. go ahead yes go. so and we had talked a little bit about just me and you know being um biracial and not really ever feeling like I had a group or that I I could identify um, with a specific group. I'm part Pakistani, part Trinidad, and a lot of other things in between. And so that was kind of a big theme in my life that I really didn't, I didn't see until I started doing a lot of like life exploring and just self exploration. And um, meaning that you didn't feel that you, you didn't understand your identity until you started exploring other things in life is that yeah exactly not even it? that it's just i didn't even think that that was like an issue okay that i didn't that okay. it was causing other issues for me okay so i um you know fast forward grow up go to college and that's an underlying factor and let's fast forward to 2016 where my dad passed away and that was such yeah a huge thing and it was a series of unfortunate events that happened that year I um, had a cousin pass away I had some family like traumatic things happen mm -hmm. and and it was that year almost destroyed me and um, I I told people to pretend nothing happened I never dealt with it and um, okay and so inside I had this turmoil that nobody knew about. And I remember just one day, um, I was so angry and so sad. And, and one day I, I finally let it go and I, I forgave. I was mad at God, I was mad at a lot of things and it was like this release. And I went through you know, a really bad depression and I realized, you know, one thing that my dad said to me, and you know, my dad traveled um, from Pakistan all the way through Europe by himself and kind of made his way into America and built his um, businesses. And one thing that he said to me that stuck with me was that he was proud of me 
uh, because I was like him in the way that I was able to go to, you know, Ohio and build my, um, build my own life on my own. I, yeah. I paid my own bills. I learned how to manage my life and I didn't even realize that that was such a huge accomplishment. But anyways, I, I realized and I remembered those things and I was like, you know what, what if I was happy? And, and I started to do a lot of self-reflection and I read a lot of self-help books and psychology was my uh, major. So I love anything self-help and psychology <laughs> and I read so many books. <laughs> and so over the course of 2016 through, no, I would say 2017 through 2018, I, um, I just read all these books and I read, um, Braving the Wilderness was a huge book for me because it just talked about my theme for 2018. So I was going through a divorce and I'm wearing this butterfly clip and I'll tell you a little story. Okay. So you, within two years, I'm just going to pause just to reflect for a minute and recap. Okay. So, so within the space of two years, I changed. All right. So 730 days within the space of 730 days, you have deaths and tragedies of key mem regarding key members in your family and a divorce. Yeah. You are also in the Saturn return, late 20s. Saturn is coming back around again. Lessons are being learned. You manifested a life makeover. Yes. You didn't manifest the sadness. You didn't manifest the divorce. You didn't manifest the deaths and the tragedies. But you took all of these things around you and you flipped the script. And what you did was you took the battleground and you made it your playground. Yes. And I need, I need to tell you one other key factor, and this is about your identity, and this is very personal, but this is something that, that I, was said to me by my guides right when you began talking. It did not really come up for me when we had a private conversation, which remains privileged, when we had it off the record. We did talk about checking boxes and how you were the other box. Yes. You were not one race, you were not another race, you were not another race, you were not another race. Okay. The other box is your superpower. Yes. That's your superpower. I think being the able to other box identify. is your superpower. I love it. <laughs> so that's what I'm being told to tell you. Your superpower is your difference. And it's not to say that people who are 100% Irish or 100% African American or 100% Mongolian aren't magical and aren't empowered in other ways. Your, Samantha, your superpower, and I, and I believe this and I'm, I'm hearing this loud and clear, your superpower is your otherness. Now, the word otherness is oftentimes used in a, in a very negative way to say that you are not. Yeah. Kind of like when you hear someone who is putting a racist overtone on something, they will say, this person's a non-white. Yes. So you're defining somebody by what they are not as if to say they are less than. In this case, otherness doesn't mean what you are not. It's what you are. Yes. You are the otherness because you are something else. You are your own thing. And what's beautiful about the other box, as we will call it, it can be anything. I love it. And it can I be anything. And not miscellaneous in a, in a negative or, or minuscule or um, ineffectual way. Other just means you are something else. So it's not for me to tell you what you are. It's for you to say what other means to you. But you, in all of this, in the upheaval of this, you flipped it all around, you manifested it. And you, what you manifested was you made it all your playground because you realized your power. I love it. I'm sorry not to interrupt you, but I needed to tell you that so that you can Thank continue. Thank you. Please so, continue. Please continue. I, I, um... I think that that is the thing that I, I love about myself. And I, I think it's important to identify what you love about yourself. And yes. 
It is mm -hmm. that I can go through <clears throat> terrible things mm -hmm. and I can, I think about the Phoenix and like rising from the ashes and being able to take something horrible mm -hmm. and become something beautiful and find the silver lining and, and continuously change and evolve. Um, so that's one, that's been the huge theme in my life. And I think that is why I can use that other where I can identify with all the groups in a small way or a big way. So and your otherness that. connects you to others rather yeah. than builds a wall between you and others that are not like you. Yeah. Sense of otherness. Where I saw gave. it as a wall. You did, and then it came down. Yeah. Yes. Wow. I love it. I love to I understand that completely. Out loud. <laughs> say that one more time. Sam, say that one more time, please, honey. Whoop, whoop. I love like saying it all out loud because it's yeah. like say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say, say it again. I can connect with everybody because of my otherness mm -hmm. versus feeling like the outsider because I couldn't identify. There are certain words and terms, and this is on that. On, 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 in the spirit of what you're saying. There are certain terms which were once negative, which have been, um, they've been transmuted, they've been reframed. Some of these are words um, used, to de used to describe races or ethnic groups and, and certain people within those ethnic groups, have, of course we know some of these words and they, they've reclaimed the words and they've turned the words around and, and, and they, they're like, well, I can use that word, you can't. Yeah. But one word that I think won't offend, and I'm not planning to use those words because they don't belong in my mouth, but, and I, I, get, I get why certain people have carte blanche with them and I do not, and that's perfectly fine because I have tons of other words I can use um, for anything. One of the words that has been de-vilified or has been neutered is queer. Mm -hmm. Queer, in its original sense was strange. Then yeah. queer meant, was a derogatory term for gays and lesbians, right? Or bisexuals. Queer got reframed. And I remember when I was in college in the early 90s, there was a class at the New School for Social Research, um, which is affiliated with my alma mater, which is Parsons. There was a class called Queer Theory. And it was, it was under gender studies and it was about gay and lesbian studies. I don't remember exactly the brackets of it, but it, queer theory. And when the word queer got reclaimed mm -hmm. by the LGBTQ community, queer now is a really cool word. And it's a word that doesn't hurt. And it's a word yeah. that doesn't offend. It's a word that's been reframed and the bite has been taken out of it. Um, and again, things are contextual, but you only ever hear the word queer when people are looking for a blanket statement, a blanket, a, a blanket term that describes a larger community of many different types. So yeah. queer is kind of like other. Yes. It's kind of, that's why I'm mentioning it and, I, and I'm, I'm not trying to interrupt your flow, but I wanted to point that out to you. I was being told to point that out to you. You can take the bite out of things. And again, I, I spoke about this with someone else I was interviewing recently about transmutation. When you transmute something, you take the energy around what something was and you reframe it. Yeah. And you go, you know what? That's actually really good. That was actually a huge victory. I really won that battle. Or I dodged a bullet by getting dumped by that person. Or, yes. or that divorce was the best thing that happened to me. Or like one person in this forum in an earlier interview said, cancer was the biggest gift I ever got. Yes, it's taking something terrible and like yeah. growing from it. And they've transmuted it. But they even just looked back at the instance and said, wait a minute, this is now my superpower. This is my chance. This is my, this is my cause celeb. This is the thing that is a life. I'm taking this and rather than being beaten up by it, I'm making it definitive. And I am shifting my paradigm from here on in. And I am writing my narrative from here on in. And Sam, when you embraced all of the things that once puzzled you or made you feel like a misfit, 
when you embraced all of those things, you were shown your power and you manifested the power that has made you the adult woman you are right now. Yeah. And again, I, I had to interrupt you because I was being told, you know, let me, they were saying, you know, let, let us speak, let us, let us speak to her. If you, if you didn't have words for it, this might help you. I love it. You have some words for it because, you know, you are really powerful. You are a very powerful individual. Um, and I don't believe you ever felt powerless. Yes. I think it's everything that I felt was inside me, mm -hmm. but I never brought it out. Okay. Like I didn't want to be seen, if that makes sense. You always wanted to be seen. You yeah. wanted to be seen, but you weren't looking to have all the other stuff seen. Is that what you're saying? I like, I guess I felt powerful inside. Got it. Okay. I misheard you. Versus letting that be seen. Okay. Got it. Okay. Now I get it. Okay. Okay. And that's where we get into that, that book. So 2018, I was, it was kind of where I decided that I was going to be happy and I was going to stop finding my identity in other people and other circumstances Major. and find it in myself. Like who, who is Samantha? Mm -hmm. And that, that was hard. And I mean, it took me back to art and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. music and being in choir and, mm -hmm. and all the things that I love and exploring those things. So I actually did this uh, ex exercise with, one of my good friends, Megan, who is a coach, and it was, um, and I forget what it's called, but basically you take a bunch of cards with words that you are, that are supposed to be important to you. Okay. You make and them, you make the cards yourself? You know that they come in a pack and they're like words like love, mm -hmm. uh, vulnerability, courage, stuff like that. And you pick a bunch and then you keep removing until you have the ones that are, that are the, what you want for your life. And that was a big exercise because there's so many cards and I'm like, okay, well, what are the ones that I want to focus on for this year that I need and that I want in my life and that I want to work on? And one of the biggest things was vulnerability. And so when I talk about not wanting to be seen and not letting people know, like not letting people know the pain I was going through with my dad's death and how much it destroyed me and not just not sharing and i was never vulnerable i felt like i always had to like self protect and that was huge so reading brene brown's um braving the wilderness it was like that book so first of all she's my girl and that book was amazing so that was the first book kind of that really i mean i'd read a lot but that one really kind of helped shape who i became or who i came into like coming into myself was this around the time that you edited down the pile of cards to the word vulnerability yes because i have to also interrupt you very quickly because i'm being told to tell you when you chose the word vulnerability as your final card or the last one you set the intention yeah that was the manifestation you said i am manifesting the strength to be vulnerable yes and the trust in others to be vulnerable and the trust in myself to be vulnerable and say, it's okay that I'm upset. It's okay that I'm sad. It's okay that I'm angry. And it's okay that I'm working this out. You set the intention. You said, I am going to embrace vulnerability. That was something that you manifested. Yeah. Because you chose, you set the intention. And you didn't, you didn't just talk the talk. You walked the walk. Yeah. Yeah. There was money behind the check. It was, it was that's the, the hardest thing that I have ever had to do. And it included exercises like asking people for help, even though I could have done it by myself. Yeah. I was used to just always doing it by myself. What did you find when you asked people for help? Like even emotional help or just someone to chat with? What did you find? It was scary because you're like trusting somebody to be there for you. Yeah. Which is like another Very whole hard. layer. But it is hard because it's like, I not being, you can be self-sufficient, but when you are vulnerable and you allow people to truly be in your circle, yes. and know you, there's so much power in that. Yes. And I found that people showed up and sometimes they didn't, but I was okay with it. And it's okay. People and, have circumstances that yeah. come from 
Yeah. But I and didn't do it on purpose because I, I knew yeah. that I needed to practice. Like you did the right thing. What I'm being told to tell you, and again, I'm, I'm only interrupting you to give you the guidance on it. I think you already know this, but this might be redundant, but I'm, I'm being guided to tell you that you did the absolute right thing. And I need to also, I'm being told that, all right, let me get this right. You did this with going inward and you did this by reading, relating, activating certain things about yourself and then actuating the final circumstance. Yeah. You were, even though it was painful and messy at certain points, some of it was easy, but all of it led you to the realization of what you wanted was you wanted to be free of pain. You wanted to be free of anger. You wanted to be free of sadness. You wanted to be free of, again, the first layer that we talked about was identity and otherness. Yeah. You became free of you became free from all these things by embracing them, or as some would call it, leaning in and really, really getting into it. And the other thing I'm being told to point out, you did this without alcohol and drugs. Yes. And this is this is a major thing that I'm being told to point out to you. Um, other people have done this by ignoring it and medicating. And you can medicate with alcohol, you can medicate with drugs, you can medicate with many other things. But what I'm being told to tell you is part of the reason you didn't was because you just, you, like you said, you didn't want to be defined by others and your relationship to others or who you were to others or looking for your identity as dictated to you by others. Had you gone the alcohol and drug route, your days and nights all would have been dictated or they all would have been ordered or measured by your relationship to how much you had consumed. Yeah. Whether you were drunk enough or high enough or whether you were buzzed enough or whether you were out with girlfriends or with a cute guy or with somebody tying one on and getting wasted and then stumbling home. And then, oh, that was a great night. Wish I could remember. Meanwhile, the pain is still there underlying. Yeah. So you need to just, one way I think you need to just remember to be gentle with yourself. And I'm being told to use the phrase, be gentle with yourself, is to say, I did it the right way. Yeah. And in the future, if any of these demons come up again, if any of these monsters come up again, remember how you did it the first time, because it's the formula that works for you. And the other last bit of guidance I'm being told to give you, again, this interruption is, is significant. The other bit of guidance I'm being told to give you is you did it the other way <laughs> because of your otherness and your otherness is your superpower. I love it. <laughs> your otherness is your superpower. It's your, it's your absolute superpower. Your unique point of view, both individ your unique and individual point of view whether it's cultural, whether it's tied to gender, whether it's tied to your experience, whether it's tied to your education, whether it's tied to just your lens on any given day, that is your superpower. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. I'm gonna let you continue, but I had to tell you that. No, I love all of it. And- mm -hmm. um, It's the truth. Yeah, the vulnerability. So being, being okay with being seen, that, that changed my whole life because I could actually be in relation with people and I could help them because I had been through a lot in my life in such a short amount of time throughout my life. And so being able to share those things, the connections that I made. So the other thing was building strong female connections um, and relationships. Okay. and exploring what I love to do and being comfortable being alone and being comfortable being who I was and loving who I was and knowing who that was. And so next book I read, and here's where we get to the manifestation. Mm -hmm. um, so my career, I felt like I kind of, I fought for things, but I also let people, I asked for, I asked what I should be able to do. I didn't control it and I didn't, okay. I didn't okay. own it. I didn't, um, 
not own it, but I let, you, are you saying you didn't self start it? Yeah, like I I knew what I wanted. Reactive rather than proactive, maybe? Is that it? I was asking for permission. Got it. Oh, that's huge. Boom! <laughs> that you realized that you were asking for permission. You start asking what for permission. What could I be? Yeah, and then it gets to the point where you start asking permission to breathe. Yes. Yeah, and that's a, sli that's a perfect, slippery slope. Doing what everybody wanted me to do, just not too loud, just sweet, perfect. Stand. And don't... Um, there's a line from the song by Madonna called uh, What It Feels Like to Be a Girl. Yeah. And it, um, when you open up your mouth to speak, could you be a little weak? Yes. When you're trying hard to be your best, could you be a little less? And yeah. it's, it's the way that some people look at, and I don't think this is just women, but it, it, it tends to be for women. You just sit there and be pretty. Yes. And you do your work. Be and you be pretty. The, and you be the accessory. Yeah. You be the accessory to somebody else. Mm -hmm. You essentially be the wingman. Yeah. I had this conversation with somebody earlier on record, on a recording, where they said that they were kept around to m magnify the beauty of or make somebody else look good. And I said, oh, they kept you around as their wingman. And what that means is the person who puts you in that position is the person who's insecure. Yeah because they can't do it without you. And I have to tell you one other thing. You, you got very comfortable spending time on your own, right? You are who you are when you're alone. Yes. You are never more who you are when you're alone. When this recording is done and we're done talking after I shut this off and then after we have our post chat and I, and I shut the computer off and I go do what I'm doing for the rest of the evening, I, I am 100% within myself and I'm 100% myself when no one is watching and so are you. And if you can do that and be well, yeah, because you didn't need anyone else to define you and you didn't need anyone else to give you permission. Should I read this book? Which book should I read? Okay. Which book should I read? Which is different than saying, can you recommend a good book? Yes. Because if yes. someone recommends a book, that's different. But if you say, should I read it? Well, should I do this? Should I yeah. do this job? Should I? And that was. Am I allowed to? Yeah. 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 I would be a good fit versus being in control of my own destiny and being. I don't know what the words are, but. Being the proactive one. Yeah. And. Yeah. And I, um, I spent a lot of time. I mean, like I'm a five, two. Mm -hmm. Email. Okay. So I spent, I've had a lot of experience of just being called a cute little something, or maybe you should be mm -hmm. in like, you shouldn't be in the back office. You just like things like that. And so it's funny um, how people react to stature, physical stature. Yeah. You know, if you were five foot 10, people might, would react to you differently. Because, yeah, they I would be, be cute. They wouldn't say cute. <laughs> they would use another adjective. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, I'm only five foot six. So I'm more averagey mm -hmm. for a guy. But I think that some of us who are not very tall, when we walk tall and we talk tall, we become taller. Yeah. Because you teach people how to treat you. And I think that one thing that you've definitely manifested is or I'm getting the guidance that you've manifested, people regard you very differently than they did four years ago. Yeah. Or, and yeah, it's, you got taller. Yes. So when I think about people, when I talk to people, I'm like, I am, don't feel like I'm a 5'2 woman. Like, I nope. feel like, and that will be, that's coming. So next chapter is I read You're a Badass by Jen Centura. And that book changed my life. I like it. And I loved it. I read it a few times. And so we fast forward, I'm divorced and I'm in my apartment. And I, what I, you know, I had applied for jobs in New York and never really felt like I could make it here. Okay. And I, um, I had applied for so many jobs and I never got it. And, and I knew that it was a really hard mm -hmm. area to break into. And I actually got some guidance from, um, a mentor and she was like, well, you need to do 
either you need to get your a focus in HR and use the years that you have and stay in HR, or you need to get your master's and have three years so you could go into like a different. And so just basically, it's going to be really hard to get to New York back here. And so one day I'm sitting in this executive meeting and I'm like, you know what? I, I had never been to Europe. No, actually, let's talk about the butterfly clip. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. When I was, um, I've had it since 2018. And when I was getting divorced, I decided to take a trip because I had never, um, I had never done something just by myself for myself alone, like made all of the decisions by myself. And when I booked the hotel for myself, I went to Michigan um, on the beach. I felt like I jumped off a cliff. Like I, it was just like this rush and it was like so scary. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to do this. And people were so mad at me. They just didn't understand why I was getting divorced. And my ex is a wonderful person, but it was about that I had lived someone else's life. And when we came together, my dad had, my grandpa had just passed away, which was traumatic. My dad got a terminal illness and then he passed away. And it was never about me and my ex. It was these series of terrible things that had happened. And so when I was at the hotel, I was sitting there by myself and I was listening to this band, this woman, she was the singer of the band, came over and we had this conversation. I was like, I love your butterfly clips. Like butterflies are my spirit animal. And she gave me this clip and I love just- she picked it out of her hair and handed it to she you? She gave it to me. It had her energy in it. Yes. And you I realize was- that's like somebody giving you the cardinal ring and going, the power is yours. Yeah. And that was like the start of my journey. The power is yours. I loved it. The power is it. yours. Have you connect have you connected with this woman since that moment? No. Or, okay. You didn't you didn't get any of her like social or no, any of I had her- gotten off of social media. Oh, okay. Um and actually that is a really great idea because I would love to. Can you find the name of the woman? Do you know the name of the woman or the band or whomever? Find you will f- I think you'll find her. I will find her. Research is my jam. Yeah, I think so. And I, <laughs> I believe that I believe that you'll find her and you say you may not remember me. But I wear your Sometimes we do her. things in the course of our day to strangers. Yeah. Or relative strangers, or even people we know that we think are insignificant and small. And they remember them forever. Yes. I mean, they remember them forever. I mean, it's as simple as holding a door for somebody. But she she definitely connected to you. You had a you had a spiritual experience there. Yeah. Um and I'd like to remind you what she did for you and what, what I'm being told to remind you of, what she did for you in terms of the kindness and the gesture, but the empowerment. That, it, that that gesture represented, you are that person for other people. Yeah. You are that person for other people now, and you will continue to call upon that experience of a woman handing you this butterfly clip. Just this, you're gonna continue to hand the butterfly to other people. I so, love that so if, much. If you, yeah, the phrase I'm being told to give you is, you hand the butterfly to somebody. So in the future, if we're having like an inbox text conversation, if this comes up again, just say, hey, I handed the butterfly to somebody. I want to talk to you about it. And then we can talk about it privately. Hand the butterfly. You're holding it gently. You let the butterfly wings go. You hand it to them. They can hold it in their hand. It's still living. It's not crushed. It's not dead. It's not dying. It's still living. You've handed the butterfly to somebody. Yeah. And it's it's not, you didn't throw it at them. You didn't buy it for them. You handed it to them. And here's what she did. She showed you your power. Yeah. She showed you your power. And we, things. we show one another each other's powers. Hopefully in the course of this conversation, you are being shown your power. Mm-hmm. I didn't create your power. I am not, I am not responsible for your power. Again, I am not the subject. I am the host. I am the facilitator. I'm channeling some information. You are the guest. The topic is manifestation, but the subtopic for this particular conversation, Samantha, is you are being shown your power. And all, everything that you have said so far in what you've manifested has been about 
being shown your power. Yeah. Even in your vulnerability, you were shown your power. So thank you for sharing the butterfly story. That was really yes. very relevant. Very so relevant. I love it. I wanted to share it and I've been wearing it lately and I remembered actually, it's like you forget all the things. I noticed it as soon as you got on the camera. I said, I like your clip. Yeah. I love butterflies. Good. Anyways. <laughs> um, so that was kind of the start of it. It was that trip. And so fast forward and I'm sitting in this meeting and I am like, I'm starting to, things are slowly starting to happen where I'm starting to do the, you know, manifest and like, um, mm -hmm. take actions to change my life. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I had never been to Europe and I, I, it's like in my head, I need to be in a relationship or be with somebody to go. And I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't need a man to go to Europe. I'm going to take myself. You don't need and a friend at I all to go to Europe. You go alone. This. I can do this by myself. And I bought this. I bought a ticket to go to Copenhagen. Ooh. And then I extended to go to Sweden. I visited some family. But I, um, I was like, oh, my God. And everybody would be like, Oh, you're so brave. And I was like, that is code for you're crazy as hell. Like, what are you doing? That and, is funny. I like the way yeah. you put that oh, subtext up. The subtext. It's brave. always the I'm subtext. Like, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and so we get to the moment and I'm like, and I actually, what I did was I um, rented an apartment that was month to month because I knew that I wanted to potentially move somewhere and I was ready to do more traveling and I wanted that freedom to be able to pick up because I was like, I had been in Cincinnati for 10 years yeah. and I was like, it's time. Like, you I set the table. Yes. You set the table. Yes. Yeah, you did. You said, like, these are my terms. You told yes. the world, these are my terms and I am manifesting this. Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So I bought the ticket in August and I went in October, the beginning of October. I moved, I finished moving the day before I, I went to New Jersey and I spent um, a few hours with my family and then the next day I went on my overnight to Copenhagen and I, I get there and like all these things went wrong and I'm like, I'm texting a friend and I'm sitting in the bathroom and I had taken out way too much money in the ATM and I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. What am I doing here? And so I get there and I finally, um, I leave and everybody's so helpful and I get to my um, You're meant to be and there. I'm like, you were meant to be there. I just did this. You did? I navigated a foreign country. I learned the- Your father. Your father. Yes! And he was just there. He is yep. this underlying like energy with me. My you dad. knew this though. You didn't I even need to tell you. Yes. It was your father. You were in a way, even though the coordinates might not have been the same, you were doing his type of journey. You yes. were doing a dad-like journey through a different travelogue, and he I had your back. I thought about it that way. I know he had your back. Way. You were doing dad's journey. You know how people go on spiritual walks where they might walk somewhere in the Holy Land or yeah. they might take a walk that, that, that a biblical um, figure took and yeah. they want to see what they saw? Or even people that go on these pilgrimages out west where they go, well, I want to walk where Ansel Adams photographed all those things. Yeah. I just want to see where he walked and how he arrived at those subjects. You did that. Yeah. But you, you did. You, you, but here's the difference. You manifested your own trip. You created your own path. But you had divine guidance. And at that point, the divine guidance was your father. Yeah. And... Um, it's going to continue. It's going to continue. In fact, that divine guidance led you to have the conversation we had on the phone, the, on video that night. Say, I no, no, I'm in. I'm doing I this. Yes. I'm doing this. And and I'm not. I'm not trying to put this conversation in the same bracket as your father. That would be very arrogant and disrespectful. But it's that same confidence now in your own intuition that says, Oh, this is cool. Let me explore this. This won't yes. hurt me. Let me try that. I love talking about these things. But you probably would not have done that four years ago. And no. four years ago, you were four years ago, you were still within a different realm. So yes. look what you created about your look what you created with yourself. Yes. You manifested everything. You, you know, won. I you won everything. 
I didn't even think about that trip as being like, but my dad, he always wanted me to travel and do things. And I never did. I always was in relationship and letting that dictate my life. Yeah. And this was And if he first. didn't want to go where you wanted to go, it wasn't yeah. going to happen. And you weren't going to bring it up. No, this was the first time where I was like, everything was a decision that I had made. And it felt, I felt like I had looked at this like website, Scott's Cheap Flights, for that whole year of my like self explore mm-hmm. And it was the first time where I was like, I feel like you need to listen. When your spirit, I'm very in touch with my spirit. Say it. Says something to you, like when you get that feeling, you do it because it's telling you this is it. And I was like, it felt right finally. And like I had seen trips to go everywhere, and I was like, I'm doing this. Is this is the one? Your story is not just about jobs and career and moving and going on vacations. Yeah, it's not about that. There are elements of travel and going on trips and there are elements of exploring new avenues in the career and exploring new avenues in the self, but these are not surface level things. Your story is magic. Yeah. That's your narrative. And I want to tell you something. You manifested your narrative because you created from a real place. You didn't create your life by default. Some people create their lives by default when they let everybody else dictate. Like you said in the past, you That's allowed you yourself, manifested. You manifested, you allowed yourself to create by default because you did whatever was allowed. Yeah. The expectation, get married, be a good yeah. wife. And um, it is a very powerful and empowering thing when you just go, I'm doing this, or wait, I just did this. Yeah, everybody's like, you're so crazy. What are you doing? And I'm just like, no, no. I, just did this. No, I did a thing. I did a yeah. thing. I'm doing a thing. I'm like, I'm going to Europe by myself. <laughs> and I met amazing people. And so, okay, so then I'm doing this trip. I met amazing people. And I went to um, Malmo, which I didn't feel that didn't feel like safe to me, but um, you went where, honey? Where Malmo, it? Sweden. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was beautiful, and um, and so I get to Gothenburg, Sweden, to visit some family, and one of the things that I was looking for was a company that was global, just because I knew that I wanted to travel and I knew that I wanted to expand and grow and give you and access I, to many places. Yes, yeah. I love my previous company, but I was ready for something. It was time. It was limiting. limiting. Yeah, I was, I had grown up and, um, yeah, I'll grow it. Yes. And so I see we're in the city and I look up and I see a sign for PWC and I was like, I'm going to work there. And that was, yeah, I was like, this is where I'm going to work. Sometimes the decisions we make in a moment where somebody, somebody, Somebody that I'm still friends with to this day, when I was a junior in high school, was a freshman at Parsons School of Design. She came home and visited, visited my art class in high school, came back to visit and said, Chris, you're going there. And I went, okay. She goes, I go to Parsons and you need to go there. You need to go to school here. And I went, okay. And that was it. I was done. Yeah. It was done. And it wasn't, it wasn't so much that, she dictated it. She just said to me, you're going here. And I went, yeah, that sounds about right. It rang true. And, and, or somebody says, you know, you should try doing this. And I go, you know what? That does sound about right. Because, you know, people will give you ideas or their ideas and you'll go, nah, 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 nah. And you yes. know what filter out. But every now and then something is suggested to you or the put in front of you yeah. gently. And then you go, hey, that's an option. Man, I like that. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Your soul knows. Yes. Your soul knows. Yeah. And Your soul knows. Yeah. I applied for a couple jobs there and I applied for some other jobs. And, um, and so, you know, I have applied and I had used headhunters and I had applied mm. for lots of jobs. And I truly believe when something <clears throat> is supposed to happen and when your spirit is in line with like, like the energy that you put out, my whole theme is the energy that you put out into the world will always come back. And so whenever I'm in a mood where I'm like, I can't believe all this is happening, because I was in that mood in September and I was like, 
is anything good ever just going to happen for me? Yeah. And I was, you know, I was just, I was down and I was like, other people need to hear this, Samantha. So I'm glad you're. I have struggled with depression for my whole life and I've always been able to get myself out and I've always been connected with like praise and worship music and, Mm -hmm. and my spirit. And, um, that's how I lift myself. And I, um, I consistently, the message I tell myself is no, you've got to stop and wake the hell up because the energy that I am putting out is what will be returned. And I was like, no, something amazing is going to happen. And I just have to keep pushing on. And that has been how I've run my life. And wow. yeah. Nice. And so that's powerful. Yes. And it's like, I'm or something gonna, amazing is happening. Yes. Not going to happen. It is happening. It's Cause I think happening. in every moment, I think it's being created in every moment. All yeah. of the successes that you're going to have are generating right now as we speak. Yeah. All the successes I'm going to have in, in, in the continuation of my present life, not my future life, the continuation of my present life and in the continuation of your present life, all of those are being generated in every moment because yeah. the wheels turn based on everything you do. Yes. Yep. 100%. Mm-hmm. And I truly believe you have to consistently put out that energy that you want yep. and you attract those people like the like minded, like energies. So, um, fast forward to so that September, then October I go and I come back. When I came back to America, I felt like I was six feet tall. Like I was like, I just, I just did that. And I'm definitely not like a solo traveler. I love people even though I'm really um, introverted, naturally. But and for an introvert, you are extremely brave. And I don't mean that, and I don't mean that with an, an ounce of shade. You are extremely bold to be having this conversation with me that is going to be on YouTube. I mean, I thank you that. very much. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Not to put you on guard, but yeah. some people think they're introverts, but what they really are are ambiverts. Yeah, yes. Yeah, because I'm an ambivert, and I'm not an introvert at all. I don't have one yeah. introvert trait, but I am an ambivert where I need my break. I need yes. To, I need a break. Need like alone. Papa needs a break. A robe. Papa, Papa needs to shut the screens off and read a book in bed. Yes. Papa needs a break. He's done. I can't. <laughs> and, and same with you. Maybe, maybe part of becoming a part of, maybe a part of evident. Perhaps this is not, not mine to dictate. Part of your self empowerment is maybe losing the idea that you're an introvert. Yeah. I'm and letting saying, it all out. Yeah. And just saying, well, no, when I know it's comfortable or I know it's appropriate for me to share or speak up, I do. Because a lot of times introverts are waiting for permission to speak. Yes. And you're not. And I gave myself the permission and I took back the keys. Yes. And I think that's what, and that's, that's the biggest reason I feel like I want to just speak up because I feel like we don't talk about mental health and that is so important to me and my family because yes. there's a lot of reasons. Yes. And we spoke about that privately. We yes. did. You had full disclosure. You and I had that conversation. Mental health is so important. And, and now, especially struggling given yes. what's going on with COVID-19, but also the social upheaval, the racial conversations that are happening people not feeling that they are safe or they are not represented properly. Um, There's a lot happening this year. And you know what? With all the negativity, these things are happening for a reason because it's part of our big rethink. It's part of our big reset. And the more that we don't learn these lessons, the more that these lessons will come up to hit us in the face and go, now you have to deal with this. Yeah. But because people like you are self-advocating, and you are, you are self-generating your own growth rather than waiting for people to shake you and tell you something's wrong with you. Because nothing was wrong with you. You just wanted to fix things. Yeah. You just wanted to create things. The fact that you activated all of this makes you 10 times more powerful. And a lot to do with my dad passing. It's like, yeah. life is so short. Like you have today, you are not promised tomorrow. So what are you doing with it? And what are you leaving behind is important. Your legacy. Well, he left, 
his family. He, he generated a family and that is his legacy. And you should be very proud of that. As a member of that family, you should be very, very proud of it because he left you with very good tools. And, he can, and I'm gonna just tell you, I think you know this already, but I'm being told to tell you, he continues to guide you. Yes, I was He's so- very impressed. present in your life, yeah. So <clears throat> I get, so I get the call <clears throat> for an interview. And PWC. PWC. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, okay, I've had so many interviews. And so I get the call, I go for the screening. The next thing I get the interview with my now boss. And I was like, okay, you know, don't get too excited, but then also think it, you know, think that you're gonna get it. And then I was like, no, you know what? Actually, no, this is my job. Walk I in, this is mine. This job, and I am going to move to New York. You manifested it. Yeah. Yes. You go, I oh, know, this is so mine. To existence. Yep. And mine, mine. Yes. yes. Everybody go home. Show's over. Like, Everybody go home. Jen Centura up in this B. And yeah. I was yeah. like, and so, okay. So then I went, I did a crazy thing because I was like, you know what? I'm going to really believe in this job because you know how I was month to month in my apartment. So here's the thing. So I was month to month in my apartment and you have to give 45 days notice. And I was at 44 or 46 and I was like, oh my God, you know what? Perfect time. I'm just gonna give my notice. I'm out. I'm just gonna do it. And if I have to change I know someone my who just mind, did that. we'll figure it out, whatever. I know and someone so I, who just did that and I know she's gonna watch this video. It's those things that you do believing that some, like you yeah. have to do these things to put it into motion. Otherwise you don't truly trust. That she's going gonna to hear this. I know she's going to hear this and text me. Do it. Yes. You, you know who I'm talking to you and I'm not naming your name. <laughs> and but, so but I someone said, I know just did the same exact thing and they texted me about it. The other I'm not day. a risk taker. Like I am a risk assessor. And that has been the other, <laughs> one of my other cards is I was like, I want to take big risks. And it's okay. Live life. And so I took that risk and I was like, I told a couple of people and they were like, Are you out of your mind? And I'm like, you know what? No. 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 I'm finally in my mind. Jump in the net appears. Yes. And so I did it. And so then I got the next interview. Or they called me and they were like, Okay, you're gonna have I think it was four back to back interviews, so two hours of interviews and uh video webcam. And I was like, oh my God, okay. So that day that I had those interviews, I made some specific decisions because I was following just the book and it's like, live in the way that you want to live, like that you anticipate living and- Future and, you. Yes, future me. Future and you. so I knew that I didn't want to be stressed out. So I parked in the garage under my building versus where I used usually park, mm -hmm. which is like, I mean, it's like, 20 something dollars versus eight dollars you chose the different you said no i can yeah. afford this yeah i'm gonna just do this it's a little easier i am not gonna sacrifice my time like i am going to do well in this interview and i don't want to feel stressed out like mm -hmm. i am gonna set a higher bar for myself and so i parked there and then i went home and i did my interviews and i have never interviewed like that in my life like the i boss nailed it hbic yes. <laughs> and i was my truest self yeah. And, and so when I was coming back, I was like, you know what, I'm going to park in that garage again, because I'm getting that job. And <laughs> I parked in the garage. And, um, and so the next day I was getting my oil changed and I got the phone call and I was like, oh my God. I lost my mind. Like I was screaming because I had done it. I had manifested you i had done the things that i needed to do in faith and i risked and it happened and like you know it was just it was the defining moment in my life where like i so the I, defining moment in your life was not based on marrying someone having yes! someone give you something <laughs> wait having someone give you a ring having someone put a crown on your head and a sash and you walk across the stage in heels not that there's anything wrong with that ladies it it not and it wasn't somebody putting a pin on you and saying you're great here's a blue ribbon cuz you spelled words right yeah it wasn't it was a success, but it was a self-generated success. 
based on your intellect, your intuition, and your powers of manifestation. And you walked in there and you said, this is mine. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't ask for permission. Yes. You didn't call up five friends and say, should I apply for the job? Yes. You said, I'm doing it. I'm doing this because everything that I have worked for and towards, I have earned this job. Like I can do this job. You have told me ever since I hit the record button, a story of empowerment. Yes. You've already trained. Well, everyone to know they can do yeah. this. You've already transmuted the negative things and said, you know what? No, I'm not a victim of that. Yes. Forget that. I'm flipping it. This is my bitch now. <laughs> and you are my bitch now. Yes. You put it in that parlance that, you know, and, and, and you, you, you I, I just, I just rocked it and that's and it. You and you know what? The job that I had gotten it was something that I was interested in bringing in my old company, and I was told I couldn't, I couldn't do it, or I didn't have enough experience to do it. And so and for me, it. that and moment was—you didn't accept it. I said it was. It was every promotion I had never gotten. It was just me doing something for myself and believing in myself and trusting God and, and putting that energy out there and manifesting it. And like, yeah. it was just, it was everything happening at once. And like for literally, I mean, I had champagne like for a week. You deserve family. it. Here's the deal. I was like celebrating. Here's the deal. If more people felt good enough to sip champagne over a victory, and work toward a victory that they get to champagne over, they wouldn't be laying on the couch watching Netflix and drinking bottle after bottle after wine, staring at their phone, jealous of all the things that their friends are doing on social media. They would be out there doing the things and living the life. And then they get to have a, have a glass of champagne once they have a victory. So I wanna thank you. First of all, this was an even, more enlightening conversation than the nearly three hour conversation we had without recording, which was great. It. But you have told a story of tremendous empowerment, definitely manifestation, also a faith story, a family story. Um, it would not matter if you were male or female because these are all universal things you're talking about. But yeah. as a woman, I think other women who hear this story will connect to the fact that you are not defining yourself through relationship yeah. You're saying I'm going to get it and it doesn't matter that I'm five foot two because I'm six feet tall in my brain. Yeah. And actually so am I. I'm I'm six feet tall in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> I am. And 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 someday I will tell my story. I can't it's wait. It's not my turn. It's not my turn. <clears throat> it's not my turn. That's okay. When I'm comfortable and I'm ready, I will tell my story. I don't know how I'm gonna tell it or what format it's gonna be. And or I don't know how it's going to go, but I will tell my story. But I wish I had heard your story when I was like 22. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. And, and you are at a fairly young age in your early 30s. You are in a place that 50 year olds don't even get to because they don't give themselves permission. Yes. So you got to take back those keys. Take back the keys. I love Take that. back the keys. But yeah. also the butterfly. It's like giving, passing it on. Passing it on to those who need it. Because, and that's where I feel like I want to speak and I want to share because there are a lot of me's out there. You know? Oh, that's beautiful, Samantha. Thank you. Yes. I've had other people who, who've participated in this project say the same thing. They want other people who have witnessed what they have witnessed what no matter what it is they want other people who have witnessed what they've witnessed for lack of a better word they want they want other people to be empowered by that story and realize their own empowerment and yeah. if we had more people empowering each other holding space for one another yes. 
by the way, hold space was a, a big phrase for me, but it kept coming up as I was preparing to do this video. I was pouring myself a drink and I kept hearing hold space, hold space, hold space. And I logged it in my brain and I went, okay, that's going to come up in my conversation with Sam. I love that so much. We can hold space for each other. By me having this channel, I'm holding space for everybody who comes in. Yes. I'm not telling you what you are. You're telling me who you are. Yeah. I'm giving you some guidance, but, but, or I'm giving you some decoding of it but you've already done it. You don't need me. Yeah. The one thing though I need to bring it to before we close the video, if I may move forward, let's come into the present and the future. Yeah. Can you tell me something that you would like to manifest because I would like to give you, I would like to be able to give you some guidance for that. So what would you like to manifest for the present and future? So, you know, since we've been talking and I feel like there's just been so much in my life, there's consistent Reevaluation, reevaluation, and every time I had a conversation, and I feel like our conversation was really amazing because when I started thinking about what do I, what now, right. and you know, you still get that message as a woman. Well, you should be married. You should have kids. You know, you're not getting any younger, and all this stuff. And yeah, I do want those things. I want those things. But what I, what came into my head was, you know, my family we moved a lot when I was growing up because of financial reasons. And that was something that stayed with me. I mean, we had a house um, for a while, but I, as an adult, have moved apartments at least every other year or every two years. And You and did I, mention that to me in our private conversation. Yeah. Yes, and I you thought about that. that. And I yeah. thought about that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm always thinking about, okay, well, what's my next move? And I what I want to manifest and now that I am <clears throat> here is like building the roots. Cause I feel like I kind of started doing that a little bit in Cincinnati when I was yeah. finding myself, but building the roots and stability and mm -hmm. staying someplace. Okay. You are already doing it. Yes. You did it first What I'm being told to tell you, and I'm sorry if that was a very curt interruption, but no, I love being, it. Okay. What I'm being told to tell you is you did it um without a catalog to start and i'm going to explain why they're saying that some people go shopping for god they go god shopping they buy the buddha they buy the this they buy the that look how spiritual i am look at all the stuff i have in my house look at all the things around my neck look at all my rocks look at all my crystals okay that's not god and we know that yeah they are amulets they're symbols sometimes they're tools they're divination tools they're not god mm -hmm. they're not god you started from within you did it without a catalog. You did not need ABC Carpet and Home, Huffman Coos, Restoration Hardware. You didn't need Crate and Barrel. Yeah. You built a home within yourself. You started the home within you. You started the home yeah. within Samantha. You found home. Yeah. When you find that home base, and because you found that home base, everything around you is attracted to you through law of attraction, or LOA as some of us Your call energy. it. Through law of attraction, you did attract the job. You manifested the job, you worked for it, but you also attracted it because you said, it's mine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Because you have now put out the intention first in your heart, and then you said it, you externalized it. You externalized it. You it's have your mind. end point in mind. Now you have your end point in mind as a home. What I'm being told to tell you is, if you have to clip pages from magazines or download things and save them on a Pinterest board, make your vision board however you need to make it, whether it's just a, a file on the desktop of your computer where you put pretty pictures. Yeah. Even if they're homes that don't all look alike and they don't all have one aesthetic, you might take a lamp from one room, a rug from another. You might take the way the light falls in that one country house from 1865, even though that may not be your aesthetic. The energy of that is gonna be somewhere in what you end up with. And remember, a home is ever evolving. Yeah. As you bring other items in and bring other items out and move things from room to room and space to space and bring things out for a season and then put them away and then bring them back out, it's an ever-changing canvas. And because you are a visual artist and you have the soul of a visual artist and you have the education, you have both the education and the intellect and the literacy of a visual artist, you're gonna make the most beautiful home ever. It's already being created on some level. As far as what you will end up buying, 
the one that's a little, when you have two on your plate, when you get shown two, this is for purchase, not rental. When you're shown two, the more expensive one. I love it. It's gonna be the more expensive one, even though you go, sticker shock, it's the more expensive one. Okay. It might be, and I, and I don't know what it's going to be. I'm gonna give you an example. You're able to buy two apartments. Let's just say you're buying two apartments, whether it's, I don't know if it's houses or apartments, but the example of the unit is apartments. The one in the doorman building is more money and there's also more fees by the doorman building. Okay. Can I just tell you that I just literally looked at homes and apartments and what I love that you said was the word home. Yeah, home. Where is it's a home? It's not just a, home. it's not just a lot. It's not an apartment. It's not hey, it's like a buying a space. Of mine. Buying a space? No, it's not a space, it's a home. Yeah. A warehouse is a space. Yes. And it's you know what? Yeah. When I read that book and I, I think I messaged you like, uh, or I put it on my Instagram was uh, about me minimalist and I got rid of, I declutterized, yeah. organized. And I was like, this is, this is my space. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And it took so much to get here. And then just thinking about that and I'm like, you know what? I'm finally here. I want to build roofs and the word yeah. home is so huge as I didn't even think about using that word but yeah like, you choose it's what I want to build my home yeah. and build roofs and spread wings and help others around me and so I'm really excited about that and what yeah. the future holds you built you started within so your home is already being created because you started within it has nothing to do with how much money you're making how much money you have saved how much equity you have in another property that you would that you would divest in order to pay for this it's not about that you already started your home in your heart and when you yeah. know, when you begin when you build your home first in your heart that's where it is when you start getting into well i need to be on the upper east side yeah between, it has to be below 85th and it can't be below, it can't be, yeah. it has to be below 85th and it can't be below 57th because I can't stand it below 50, you know. If you're looking at it in terms of monetary location, you, you're going to end up with something that will long-term not serve you as well. It'll be yeah. okay. But when you look for, when you start looking at homes and you go, this is a home I could live in. Yeah. When, the, when you narrow that down to two, it's going to be the more expensive one. I'm just telling you. And you know what's going to happen? Because you took that leap, you're going to either have a salary bump or a new, a new income is going to come in to mitigate that difference. So you're in a good, you're in good space. You're in a good space. Ha ha. They're saying use the word space. You're in a good <laughs> space. They gave me air quotes with that. Um, they can be snarky. My guides can be snarky. Well, it wouldn't, it. it wouldn't be a part of me if it wasn't snarky. Yeah. So, so with that, I am going to thank you. Thank you. We're going to chat a little bit after I, I stop the recording. But a tremendous thanks not only for sharing what has been a wonderful story of self-empowerment, self-realization, and actualization, but Sam, you were the first person to message me and say, hey, I want to be a part of your project, but what is it? Yeah. Just thank you for the trust and for the conversation we had that night that two weeks ago. So that conversation that night, thank you. You're welcome. And I just want to say one more thing. And I just, and it's something that we've talked about in this whole theme of your manifestation is just remembering to listen to that spirit, you know, and that, that gut feeling, because it's like you, you can see stuff and you can, your mind can tell you one thing, but like your spirit is in tune with all, everything around you that you can't see or know. And like listening to that and trusting it is so important to changing your life. And um, that's the one thing that I just, I'm feeling like I need to say. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Other people needed to hear that. Yay. This is so fun. I'm so Great. excited. All right. Let's say goodbye to the viewers. Bye. Thanks everyone for watching. Samantha. <laughs> Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye.